So looking back at our network diagram, we already installed the Windows 2012, the file server, the Windows 10 and the Windows 7. And we also have the, the router come firewall PFSense. And we also configured for the external interface to talk to the internet. We also have an internal private network which is connected to all these different virtual machines. So in this video, we will see how to promote our Windows 2012 system to a domain controller. So the way we do that is by adding a role called Active Directory Domain Services. So let's connect to our domain controller. And log on with our password. So if you don't see this server manager, you can always go to the bottom next to the menu and click on this one. And right here you can see add roles and features. Click on that. Let me go to full screen. And you can click next. And we're trying to add a role. And it's on this particular domain controller, which is on IP 1103. And we are looking for the domain services, which is the second one. So later on, we will be looking at how to install Active Directory, Certificate Services, Federation Services, and so on. We'll also be installing DHCP Server, part of this course. So after checking this, click on Next. And you don't have to change anything here. And go Next. And we can restart the destination server automatically if required. I think that is recommended. So click install. We may, we may have to restart the machine after it installs. So it says installation succeeded on DC. So let's close this. And as soon as you close the window, you see a exclamation mark right in the top corner. So if you click on that, it says post deployment configuration, promote this server to a domain controller. So just click that. And it's going to ask So finally it came back. So I'm going to type in a password. So 
So let's click next on this. Again, you got to wait till this operation is complete. So the NetBIOS domain name is going to be Xclaris and it will fill this automatically. So you don't have to change anything. Click next. So the, these, these are the locations where the log files, the syswall and the database will be stored. And this is an important folder and we will talk about this uh, later on when we get into security. Uh, but for now, just uh, accept the defaults and click next. So it is validating the prerequisites. So it may take a couple of minutes. It will speed up the process if you give it more RAM. So for a server, I mean, if you can give four to eight gigs of RAM, it will run very fast. But for our lab, it, it is good enough uh, for two GB RAM. So the, the click the install button. This is when the actual uh, domain control is installed. So let's uh, give it a few minutes. So once it's done, it says um, you're going to be signed out because it's going to restart. So after everything is done, it brings us to this screen. So remember the administrative password we created in the beginning. And uh, when you promote a server to a domain controller, the same uh, login password is uh, gets used as a domain administrative account. So click on the Xclaris administrator and type in the same password which you used before. So now domain controller is installed and uh, the way to check is go to manage or you can go to tools and you can see these different menu items are added to the list. So you can go to active directory users and computer and you can go to Xclaris. You can go to users. These are the default users and groups that are already created, but we should be able to create any standard users. So let's create a user to log on to our client workstations. So just say new user. This will be a domain user account. So this is not like a local account. Uh, this user account and password can be used by any machine on the network. Let's click next. Password, you can create anything you want. So let me uncheck this. And for now, let's keep password never expires. So it says it does not meet the password policy requirements. So let's give it a little bit more complex. So we will see how to create uh, more complex password policies in a later video. But for now, Windows 2012 domain controller has some defaults, which is why we are not able to create any easy password values. Let's create one more user. And we will call it John. So we have two users, John and Raj. So if we go to this um, computer sections, uh, we don't have any computers in this list, but that is going to change shortly. So when we 
join our client systems and our servers to this Active Directory domain, all those systems will be listed in this window. Also, when we created the domain name, it also installed the DNS so that we can reach each machine using a domain name instead of an IP address. So you can see a DNS is also installed here. So in the next video, we will see how to install DHCP server and also how to join the client systems to the Active, Active Directory domain.